Welcome to the Sale Room Tour, March 2024. First sale of the year, and we're gonna have a look around this room full of guitars. So, a lot to get through, so we will crack on fairly swiftly. There's the catalog, the printed catalog, which you can pick up in person on the viewing dates, or you can view the online catalog at auctions.gardenerholgate.co.uk or guitarauctions.com if that is your preference. As you'll see, the sale is the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th of March 2024. The first day being guitars, artist-associated guitars and a small selection of memorabilia. So that is on Tuesday the 5th. So if you're watching this video, as soon as it's been published, that is next week. So next Tuesday. Wednesday the 6th, we have part two guitars and amplification. So we've got uh, part two guitars is generally things that we consider with a starting value of under 200 pounds. On the 7th, which is the Thursday, we have guitar effects pedals, guitar spares and studio and audio equipment. All of this is online on the online catalog. And on the Friday, the 8th of March, we have antique and classical guitars. So it's a four day sale. We have just over 1100 lots, so lots to look at today. So there is the catalogue. As you can see, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th of March 2024. £5 in person when you come to the sale room. We're on view next Monday, which is the 4th of March, 9 till 5 and then the morning of each sale. But some fantastic photography there from my glamorous assistant Chris, the man behind the camera. Hello. So a good publication there. Like I said, only five pounds in person. But let's have a look around. I'm gonna pick out some things as we go, which I personally think are cool things. So I will apologize in advance that this can sometimes be a little bit biased, but I'll try and show as much as possible. We may miss some things. Um, but like I said, if you spot anything in the video that I don't necessarily point out and you think, oh, that's nice, you'll find it on the online catalog. And it should be fairly easy to um, find your way around as well because everything is in lot order. So we will go try and go round in lot order as well. So you can probably roughly work out where in the online catalog they will come. So let's take a look. So here we are. As always, we start with a big long run of Fender guitars. Fender and Gibson come first and then everything else afterwards. Um, some of the expensive things are behind the cabinets at the back, so we will jump around a little bit, but mainly start with fenders first. And you'll probably have seen a lot of these already for those of you who are regular viewers and have seen our consignment updates. Um, so apologies if you've seen the same things, but it is always nice to look, isn't it? Um, so there is lot one, a Mexican reverse 60s Fender in, the, uh, in very much in the Hendrix vein. Good condition this one and featuring it because it is a bit different and it is lot one after all, the start of the Fender run. So that is a nice thing. Um, led down on the table there but nice and safe with the cloth, nothing can happen to it, not leaning on any headstocks so um, that's always very important to add. We do make sure things are taken care of here. Um, and then lot two American Standard in silver, now it's refinished so if you do want a silver American Standard Telecaster. That's a good option because it's not a factory colour um, and it will come in at, I guess, less than a original example. And just running around, light ash Telecaster, Korean made uh, Fender there, uh, an Elite 1983 Fender Telecaster, which is I quite like them, but some people don't because they've got the necks are quite, they're quite sharp at the edges. Um, they don't tape around as well as other models do, but that's, that is in good exa a good example for its age. And then we've got a, there's a modified made in Japan Stratocaster there. 
EMG pickups. So a nice high output Stratocaster, but that's a 62 reissue from I believe the 1980s, could be an early 90s one. Off the top of my head, it'll be in the catalog. And then running around, you can see we are full of fenders. We have a refinished AVRI there, a Fender Custom Shop, a Custom Classic there, has the abalone inlays, the noiseless pickups. So I guess that is a, it's a step up from an American standard, but it's probably, I guess, I guess you would consider it bottom of the rung of Fender Custom Shop, but very good guitars indeed. Got a nice Eric Clapton Blackie in the corner there. Again, with the noiseless pickups, that one. And then if we just look down on the table in front, there's a couple of refinished 70s Telecasters. So um, very much in the player's grade vein, we've got one refinished in that green burst, which I think looks quite cool. Um, what can we say? It's almost like, uh, almost like the, uh, well, jungle. <laughs> it's like jungle. Like that, uh, jungle colours. A couple of years ago, we had one of those uh, from Ben at Crimson. Um, what do they call it? Is it like a it's like similar sort of greeny burst thing? Like, was it like Rio burst? I said Rio burst. Yeah, the colours of Brazil and the Amazon rainforest. Nice surf blue Telecaster, again refinished 70s Telecaster, but again in the player's grade category. Then uh, Custom Shop Stratocaster, Lake Placid blue finish, Relic, always very divided opinions about relicking on guitars. But that is a good example, original case, all the paperwork. And then if we just spin around, we can see a lot of variation. Player's Grey Thinline Telecaster, Blue Flower Telecaster, replaced neck on that one, but with the Blue Flower uh, 90s body. Or was it like a, off of a light ash? We think it's neck. a light ash neck. We're not, we're not entirely sure, but it's certainly very similar spec. I mean, you just put the two side by side. And you can see, there we go, same bird's eye maple, same decal, same truss rod notch, same abalone inlays. So pretty sure it's a Korean neck. Certainly looks like from the shape of the, um, the heel there as well. But yeah, interesting thing. Refinishing job needed on there. You are you're really tempted to pick all that off, aren't you? It's this when it's in your when you see it in a picture, it's not so bad. When it's in your hands and you can just feel how flaky it is, it's really hard to resist the urge to just. I think it would be quite good fun until you get a bit of paint underneath your nail and <laughs> yeah, not good. But yeah, good refinishing projects. I love. I do actually love this. The black finish with the uh, the black hardware. Uh, I think it looks smart. It's quite heavy, but it's 70s, uh, but it is a hard tell. So think of all that sustain. I'm working around Purple Sparkle Strat. We've actually sold that guitar once before, about 10 years ago. The chap who bought it from us unfortunately passed away, so we got a deceased estate um, of guitars from, from this vendor, um, selling on behalf of the family. Uh, but that is a an incredibly rare example actually you don't find many of those around at all so fender custom shop i believe it's a fender custom shop uh american i believe it's called a 1997 american stratocaster um and then if we work around we got another an early 70s a 1973 fender telecaster there uh, we got a rack of um some interesting things down here as well I actually really like this. Fender's budget range, Squire, um, the Subsonic. So like a baritone it's a baritone guitar, EMG active pickup. So yeah, get the chugs out. <laughs> chugs. Reverse, reverse headstock. Those of you who are into your gent music. The gent. De gent. I love a bit of de gent. De gentleman. <laughs> that's what we are. Um, and yeah, that's in, that's in good condition. And I guess that's 
towards the lower end of value for this room, so I'd probably expect that to hammer at 200 and a bit more. Obviously, plus plus our fees. Um, there is buyer's premium, 26.4%. Um, that is that is where our income comes from. So they, a lot of people question why we charge buyer's premium. That's the reason, because we have to make money. We're not doing this for free. Um, so yes, that is a um, subsonic Squire. Cool thing, something I quite like. And I really like this. Some have referred to it as the mongrel. So it's a 66 Fender Mustang, so we've got a 66 neck. The body is completely butchered underneath that guard. Um, but we do have a Gibson pickup here. So uh, the pickup's worth in excess of £100 in its own right. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, Ibanez type pickup here. And then there he is. Good old Dougal. Good old Dougal from the Magic Roundabout got it right this time I can't remember what I said last time but um, there we go and then we got some very modern fenders as well um, just two examples there both in incredible condition basically they're as new condition so we've got that one which is the American Ultra from 2020 this essentially came to us even though it's a couple of years old it came to us new and box it's actually four years old now god is that how long 2020 was ago Time is flying. Time flies when you have fun. Um, and there's a 2006, that one, but essentially it's, I mean, it's, it's essentially unused. So that is an American deluxe Stratocaster with the S1 switching in the pearl, Arctic pearl finish. So, well, oh God, we've only got up to the late 20s there. So, um, Coming around here, we got a Fender Performer from 1985. Very rare thing indeed. Um, we did have a couple in one sale last year, um, and this is probably this is only the third we've ever sold. Um, but so that's three we've had in two years. Quite amazing when things just start turning up like that. But they are they are rare. And then coming around this way even more, late 70s Telecaster. There's another 66 Mustang. This one's slightly more original refinished body but otherwise it appears to be okay back of the next possibly refinished as well yeah um, and then really really nice late 70s jazz bass I really like the look of these black ones with the maple board and the the block inlays I think they look really smart and that's a great bass as well got a nice uh, good case with that one And again, on the cheaper end of the scale, Squire Classic Vibe. These are amazing guitars. I have a, I personally have one of the um, the Simon Neal Biffy Clyro Strats, which, although they're slightly different in terms of one thing, Fiesta Red finish with a with a faux green guard, and specific pickups that work for the, I guess heavier nature of Biffy Clyro but I think the point I'm getting to is it's one of my go-to strats because they the necks are just really really nice and comfortable they're great guitars always a great weight they just feel nice so if you're wanting a strat but don't necessarily want to you know blow your budget then there's nothing wrong with these at all really good guitars and actually if you don't like the pickups in them you can spend you can actually get de a decent set of pickups I mean these are fine but you can get a decent set of pickups I mean I know people that swear by the I think it's Artec that make a vin 60s vintage style pickups and I know a couple of people who have installed those in their uh, those in their guitars I think they're between 30 and 50 pound a set and they're so cheap they sound great so you don't even need to blow your budget and buy your custom shop or Lola pickups or anything like that not putting those pickup brands down they're amazing and you do get what you pay for but um, I guess to someone with my ears that possibly aren't the finest tuned then <laughs> hey yeah what um, yeah anyway Squire classic vibe love this guitar 
1973 Hartel Strat Demarzio pickups. This just screams 70s with the brass bridge, the brass nut, very Richie Blackmore um, with the brass nut there. But that is a hardtail, so it's my preference. I'm not at all interested in trems. I'm not saying trems. I'm not saying trems aren't good. Just personally, no interest in them at all. Um, don't need them. So a hardtail strap for me is perfect. So 73 in sunburst. It's got really nice, like light aging on it. Proper aging there, um, and I believe that's a good weight as well. Yeah, really nice weight. The only, the only downside to this guitar in some ways is the cavities have been slightly deepened to allow for the Demarzio pickups. So, but it's not original anyway, is it? The pickups have been changed, um, but it's the original guard on there. Um, like I said, the brass, the brass bridge and the brass nut. But there we go, big fender headstock as well. This is my favorite headstock. And a lot of people look at me funny when I say that, but I think it, I just think it's, I think it's nicer. But we'll see some other variations of the headstocks. We will look at some older fenders in a second. And then working around here, um, there's another rare piece the Black Sparkle Telecaster. This is uh, made in Japan again, 1990s, but it's a rare thing. There we go, crafted in Japan, so it'll be uh, mid-90s, this one. Um, actually, no, it could be early 2000s, saying that, crafted in Japan, but anyway, there we go. And that is a Black Sparkle Telecaster. You really don't see many of these around, never had one before. Um, you, you often see a few examples online, but that's in great condition. Also comes with, I guess, an upgraded Fender ABS hard case, which would be sort of an American type case. And then just underneath, another rare or lesser spotted Fender, uh, 1980 Fender Lead 2. So a little, little dinky do, uh, black finish that's greened off quite a bit as these black finishes can. It's quite a heavy guitar for its size, um, but you've got all these um, coil switching options or pickup switching options, and it's just a nice basic guitar, isn't it, with the single coils. Honest wear there. You can see, um, yeah, it's, it has been used. Someone has loved this guitar. It's had a refret as well, which not really surprised because you've got that much wear on the body it's obviously been used quite a lot but i think they're cool and at the you know mid hundreds for uh, what is now considered a vintage guitar this is what are we looking 40 nearly 45 years old now That's bad, isn't it? madness <laughs> there we go you got a cool piece of trivia about that you say with all the wear on it <clears throat> it was the vendor's main gigging guitar uh, for like his whole career. He's also the guy that wrote the theme for Dragon's Den. There we go. So the guy who owns that guitar wrote the theme tune for Dragon's Den. Great bit of trivia there. So if you want the guitar that was owned by the man who wrote Dragon's Den, <laughs> did he use it to write the theme? I don't know, because it was don't all know. on a synth. <laughs> there we go. Well, there we go, all on a synth. So unless, yeah, use a synth pedal. There we go, pretend. Um, so. We're getting towards the end of the Fender guitars now. We've got a Kurt Cobain Jaguar in the back there. Um, and just underneath it, another artist guitar and none other than Avril Lavigne, who I used to lightly listen to back in the day. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, don't lie, we had it on last week. We did have it on last <laughs> week. No, but what I was gonna say is recently because of this guitar, it, it made us um, rekindle rekindle <laughs> our youth and it was just banger after banger yeah, man. don't you think that was a bad song <laughs> it's quite a surprise go and listen to avril levine knows how to write a song um so avril levine squire telecaster you don't see many of those around um cool with the checkerboard scratch plate which i like being a big fan of vans as well um and then there's another brand new guitar there with all its tags this was bought for the vendor by an uncle when I say it's brand new, it, it, it probably is three or four years old, but it's never been used. It's box fresh, as we say. And this one is, again, box fresh guitar, but this is a 60th anniversary Fender Stratocaster. Now, they made... Let me get this right. 
1954 of these and this is one of the first run of 54 which got a special neck plate one of 54 so Fender as always with their anniversary guitars like to confuse us <laughs> and on first glance you'd say yeah well that's only one of 54 so it's extremely rare well actually there were 1954 made the first 54 had that special plate so yeah you could say that is a rarer example and it's great seeing it in box fresh condition and you're probably not going to find one better than that to be honest of you i mean there will be others in similar condition but it's even still got the protective film on the guard still got the little uh trim sticker there so if you're into your anniversary strats then there is a collectible of the future maybe we've also got another uh, anniversary strat this is i guess one of the first anniversary strats they did the 25th anniversary this one's in pretty good condition as well the paint's gone a bit green uh, obviously it would have originally been silver for the silver anniversary but um, that is just how lacquer reacts cool 1960 I believe that's 67 Fender Coronado 12. We also have a Gibson 12 string, 335 12 string from the same year. So it's cool having, I guess, the two equivalents side by side. We'll have a look at that later. Um, a good acoustic from Fender, Fender Custom Shop Kingman 5, or Kingman V, should I say. Um, and this is a very good guitar indeed and a nice sight to see an acoustic guitar by Fender that is actually good. Uh, another um, jazz bass, this one is from the 1970s as well, um, I believe 73, 74 off memory, you can see the modifications, it's had the 70s touch, the Demarcio jazz bass pickups there and it's been slightly routed here as you will see um, for the these switches, the guard's been replaced as well, I believe. And then next to that, a 1979 Stratocaster. Now, it's quite to believe that that's that old. The condition's incredible, and I I've got a special mention for this guitar because most of you will be thinking that this weighs an absolute ton because most of them do but that really doesn't. I mean, if I went and handed this to my cameraman now, he would probably go whoop like that, <laughs> expecting it to be heavy. It, it really is that light. Um, so when I say that light, it's still got some weight to it, but it's that's gotta be at least a kilo less than a normal, um, a, a normal late 70s. I think there's another one in here somewhere that weighs a lot as well. It's like of those. <laughs> yeah, there is one somewhere. When and this is behind the cabinet. We might, we might have already gone past it. But that is um, got a really nice sort of Sienna type sunburst as well. Um, with the black hardware, I think that's a really, really smart looking guitar. And don't believe everything people say or used to say about 70s Fenders. It's funny how that changes there. Most of them are good. Um, and yeah, future future collectibles when everyone realizes. I mean, when I say most of them are good, I mean that's probably a little bit incorrect. A lot of them are good, um, and yeah, when everyone realizes in the future, maybe they'll go up in value. Who knows? So we say all the time, a good guitar is a good guitar. A good guitar is a good guitar. Is an instrument. We finished Fender. Until we go to the cabinets, we'll have a look at some older, more expensive Fenders, but generally speaking, everything around here um, is worth under £2,000, or we consider it to have a lower estimate of under £2,000, hence it being out in the wild. Um, so on public viewing, you are welcome to come and walk around and handle these things obviously carefully any bad behavior and then our staff will be on you but um <laughs> but rest assured our um our viewing public treat their guitars like they wish their own to be treated so 
everything is well looked after obviously but the more expensive things we do put behind the cabinets just for that extra security so that ends fender guitars so on to gibson's possibly the most ridiculous gibson guitar ever and we've got two we got two i'll show you the other one in a minute so th the the mad thing about these is although they look quite silly they're actually amazing instruments. They're, they're amazing guitars. Well. They're unbelievably comfortable to play. They balance quite nicely. They sound great. And generally they play really well. We actually had um, we had a, a few purists, or uh, people I would consider guitar purists in a couple of weeks ago, looking at some, um, having a view of some of the expensive stock that they're uh, interested in. And, we were we were having a bit of a laugh about silly guitars and the conversation of these came up and they had a go and expecting it not to be very good at all and were absolutely shocked <laughs> so if you actually you, i mean obviously you can't play this sat down maybe you can actually it's not too bad yeah so you could um you could play it sat down, I guess, but if you're okay standing up and you don't mind, you know, looking how you'd look with one of these on stage, <laughs> I'm being really careful what I say because I don't want to make any offence, but um, then you will at least have a great guitar. So yeah, if you want a great guitar, there you go. And they're, they're only going to become rarer because I can't see them making them again. And, um, following Gibson's circa 2007-2008 moment of madness and <laughs> I just, I'm just going to go over here because there is a nice firebird here again another guitar that's got an out there shape but that's a firebird studio rounded edges on that one with the dot inlays so you can tell it's a firebird studio from those features at least but that's a good guitar good example few marks to the body but like with most things in here, the majority of things are used guitars, even though some of them are only lightly used. And then, as always, we've got a good varied selection of Gibsons. So here we have a, I'm just gonna remind myself of the date of this, I believe it's late 80s, an 88 it is, 1988 blonde or natural Gibson ES335 in very good condition some tarnishing to the hardware as you'd expect it does it can happen in just even in storage but in good condition got a good selection of Les Pauls got a Les Paul classic there we've got a Les Paul custom there this is a 70s Les Paul custom um, this has had its pickups robbed and Seymour Duncan's placed in there but this one's from 1978 so late 70s but nice strong sunburst finish on this one that comes with its protector case as well nice example and then we have a gibson folk singer acoustic got a few gibson acoustics and to say in that we haven't got a huge amount of gibson acoustics in the cell we've got some very good acoustics other brands in the cell but that is one of one of many so that's a 60s folk singer model and just above that, you can see a heater. I just want to make it very clear that heater is not on and will not be on because we do not want to melt <laughs> any any guitars, <laughs> melt or warp any guitars. So that heater is definitely not on. Um, so one of my favorite Gibsons in the sale, I love RDs, silver burst finish. This was a guitar of the month from back in 2008, I think. Um, they did all, all of that year, it was 2007, 2008, all of that year they did a guitar, the guitar of the week it was, not guitar of the month, um, and this was um, f week 40, I think it was week 48, something like that, it's all in the catalogue, I'm just trying to pick these uh, nuggets of information off the top of my brain, um, so there we go, uh, Dirty Fingers pickups, really cool thing, massive Mastodon vibes I think there, um, and some more Les Paul customs from the 70s as you can see in fact we've got quite a few guitars from the 70s here we've got the we've got the more modern uh, two th early 2000s faded SG at the back there um, very good guitars and again 
sort of uh, mid mid hundreds on those hammer price. But this one here, um, we've got we've got two Lesbol customs with broken headstocks, so players grade. We've got the stinger there. You can see the neck repair. Uh, but that is a nineteen seventy three or four Lesbol custom. Again, all the information is in the catalogue, and. Again, a nice example apart from the head break, which is a bit of a shame, but it should suppress the price enough to uh, gain the interest of those who don't want to go for the cost of the full original ones. And again, we've got, uh, this is from roughly 71, again with a head break. It's a bit of a crude head repair. Honestly, if it was me, I'd probably break that again, just to repair it and get it all flush. Uh, but it's also been uh, routed for a central pickup. Uh, there's a there, we know there's one Seymour Duncan. We're not sure what the other two are. We're going to make the assumption they're similar pickups, um, but they're not branded like the Seymour Duncan is. But again, another player's grade from around 71. And then next to that, we have a 70s Les Paul Deluxe with the mini humbucker. Very underrated pickups. Well, when I say underrated, we've all been saying they're underrated for years now, so I guess they probably are rated now, but that's from 1981. So a 1981 Les Paul Deluxe in decent condition, some knocks and scrapes, but you'd expect that for a guitar that is approaching, uh, again, 40, 45 years old. Um, but yeah, good example, has its original case as well. And then as I know all of you will have been jumping up and down saying, show us the other one, show us the other one. There it is. <laughs> it's the reverse V. This one in the natural finish. I guess it's kind of like a, a Karina type look. So yeah, similar period, 2000 and that one is from 2008. I think the other one's slightly earlier, 2007, but they didn't make them for very long. And then coming around here, just one more run of Gibson guitars, a few more Les Pauls, a double cut there. Uh, we've got a L00 acoustic there from around 68. This one's been refinished, new guard. So again, a player's grade example, but I guess a, a, a good armchair Gibson, nice small body. Some more modern Gibsons here. We've got the root beer finish on this Midtown Deluxe. So you, don't see many of those. Nice deep quilt on that one. Brown's not for everyone, but it is for some. Um, 70s, mid 70s S1, Gibson's answer to the strap. We actually had two of these in the last sale, which are the, two fir the first two I ever had um, in 16 years of doing these auctions. But this is a 75 S1 from 75. So the third, we've, third I've ever had in the space of about three months. Uh, 65 Gibson ES120. So you've got the single pickup on the floating guard there. It's it's okay. I mean, in terms of condition, it's a nice guitar, but condition-wise, it's, again, I guess it's as you'd expect for a used guitar of that period. Um, love these. These are amazing. This is, this is, I guess from the period where Gibson got good again. So this is from 2020, Les Paul Jr. And um, yeah, it's just a, a good solid guitar. If you want a Les Paul Jr. but you don't want to go breaking your budget with the vintage examples, there we go. It's nice even thing. A couple of stops down as well. Is it even better? That's subjective. Oh, can't can't no. say it's better. It's very subjective. <laughs> that is. It's but, such a great guitar. But yeah, it is better. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, this one funny is, say. yeah, it's funny, funny you should say that because um, this one's from 2004. So again, I guess 2004, I mean, I, got, I, I do have two Gibsons from 2004 and that is getting towards the point where Gibson started changing things and, and going a bit wild and things going downhill in my opinion it was around 2007 2008 that happened so this the early 2000s gibsons are great this is a double cut les paul special in the faded tv yellow finish some natural wear happening there on that guitar and then next to that we have another root beer finished gibson this one uh, the les paul 
So a Les Paul standard type guitar. And then we've got another faded SG there. So we've got two faded Cherry SGs that we've seen. Gibson J45, very, very good condition. Very good guitar as well. It's been nicely, although it's in really good condition um, and there's nothing wrong with it at all, it has actually been played and played in. So it does, it does sound good, very resonant. Um, I find sometimes when, when you see get modern Gibsons or, or most modern acoustics when they haven't been played in they can sound a little bit dead because the wood hasn't um, opened up and resonated so um, that is a that is a good example Not a 1930s Gibson there so that is a nice piece used by an old jazzer um, consigned with a couple of classical guitars of all things um, and a few fine stringed instruments one of which will be in the uh, Friday sale on the 8th other musical instruments check out the catalogue for that so that is a good example an L7 and then we've got a Les Paul signature T which I love the finish on I love white guitars anyway but look at the the well, it's like when this came in, neither of us had ever seen one. Yeah, I'd never, no, I'd never actually heard of a signature T. It's got the robot tuners. We can, um, but they can be changed. Yeah, we can put those in the bin, and uh, <laughs> some people, I guess, enjoy them they're, because they're, it's, it's like they're not bad. But it's getting past that, like when you want to adjust one string yourself. Exactly. You can't because you've destroyed the motor in them. But. One thing I will say, you'll see there's a cloth on the stand at the back there. I absolutely hate what they look like in the room. If I could just get rid of them all, I would, but they're there to protect the finishes on guitars because guitar stands, the rubber guitar stand, you do have to be careful with, uh, especially nitro burn, but they can leave marks on all guitars. So we do put them on all guitars that come into contact with the stands just to give them protection. Um, luckily it's never happened with any of our stock but I learnt the hard way of my own guitars before I started selling guitars which is why I know to do it so uh, yeah do um, do be careful of that that's why we do it that's why in the video some of you may be thinking god look at those awful yellow things why have they put those there that doesn't look very nice and no you're right it doesn't and uh, <laughs> I wish they weren't there but they're there for a reason another vintage Gibson this is a 65 ES125 and I think this is a, a lovely guitar and it's got just the right amount of age and checking decent condition and yeah nice thing nice example skinny nut so it's late 65 so you've got the slimmer nut up there when they transition to the, the skinnier neck so it's not always for some especially those who've got big hands big fingers um, I'm I tend to, I've got fairly small hands so I'm okay with, with, with both and then we've got a Gibson Midtown standard on the end there just to finish the Gibson run. So as we said I guess the vintage guitars and the higher value guitars are kept behind a cabinet area just to um, just for more protection added security um, but what we have is a lot of guitars that we featured quite a lot already on all of our social channels so I think I can I can I guess briefly wash over these in some ways there's lots of video demos um, Jack Kendrew our uh, guitarist that we get in to f demo these for us um, you'll see lots of demo videos on our YouTube channel of him playing them so go and have a look at those but we have a 1952 Fender Telecaster there so an early Blackguard, a desirable thing. It's obviously been refinished. Um, it's had some routing under the guard, so player's grade condition, but it is a rare thing and a rare opportunity to get one in a player's grade condition, one that's not necessarily going to cost the earth because the value of these are up there, there these days. There is more in-depth video about that guitar as well. There is indeed. We have done an under the hood video of this also on our channel um, so obviously if you are interested and in liking this content then do subscribe to our channel like this video and hit the bell icon because you can see more content like under the hood videos and the video demos you'll always get notified this one at the top you'll think oh that's not a guitar 
That's a violin. What's that doing here? And we do sell violins. We've got um, probably over 200 violins in our sale on the Friday. Check out the catalogue for that. We, we actually specialised in violins before we specialised in guitars, um, but guitars has kind of just exploded. Um, but this guitar, this violin, this, guitar. <laughs> this violin is down here for one reason, and it was made by the former Martin Foreman and the man responsible for most of Martin's early designs, including the most copied guitar ever, the Dreadnought, John Henry Dykeman, Dykeman. And this guitar, this saying guitar again, this violin was made by him in 1914. So very interesting indeed. Um, and it's got some decent provenance with it where it came from. Um, it essentially came through an estate sale um, and the vendor who purchased the guitar, uh, guitar, I keep saying guitar, purchased the violin in that estate sale um, had connections to the source as well so it's a cool thing be interesting to see where that ends up obviously it's not a guitar by the man it's a violin but he was an important and influential man in the history of Martin guitars they probably wouldn't be where they are today without him um, and you can read lots of information about him online. You can have a look at our catalog listing where we touch on why he was important. Underneath, we have an original 1959 Gibson ES175, and it has not been robbed of its PATH pickups, which is incredibly rare because 175s are often robbed of their PATHs because people with more expensive guitars like Bursts will rip them out, nick them, put them in their bur burst and then put something else in there um, because the pickups themselves are valuable but that's a good original example with case and then we have an Anthony Zematis this is a real deal Anthony Zematis from 1999 not long before he retired in 2000 and then passed away in 2002 so that is a custom deluxe top of the line metal front model engraving by Danny O'Brien. We'll come round and feature this acoustic shortly afterwards after this section just because there's an artist connection and we'll look at some artist guitars later but here we have a Roy Smek, uh, the recording, recording King Roy Smek, a very good example indeed from the 1930s and then we are going to have a look at some old Stratocasters. So what we have here is three Sunburst vintage pre-CBS Stratocasters. I'm saying pre-CBS, one is transitional, so I'm correcting myself straight away. But we have three early Stratocasters which are all in original condition. So let's start with the one on my right because that is the earliest of them. That is a 57, original 57 Stratocaster. So you'll see the spaghetti logo, the maple board, which will have the V-neck profile and the two-tone sunburst finish with the single ply guard. So those are the distinguishing features you also find with those guitars. I'm not going to take it out and show, but um, take my word on it. The contouring and carving is a lot finer, which a lot of people like. Um, so that is the 57. Next to that, sticking with the spaghetti logo, but we have a rosewood board with clay dots, free ply green guard, and the three tone sunburst finish. That is a 1963 Fender Stratocaster that, apart from a few internal rubber um, pickup height grommets, is completely original with an original Selma case owned by the current vendor since the 1970s and then moving along we have a transitional Stratocaster so where I mentioned my favorite uh, Fender logo being the very big curved one this is the one in between so the slightly bigger Fender the reason they changed it is because they wanted the logo to be bigger and so when obviously CBS took over and 
they, they were making changes and obviously they're a commercial company and they want the logo to appear bigger so people could see it more so more brand awareness so that's why the logo changed so bigger logo um, but this is a rare example because you have clay dots and a green guard with the target sunburst on a all on 165 guitar usually you have a mixture because the clay dots and the green guard were things that were phased out in late 64 early 65 but it is a january 65 neck so most of the parts have come from a 64 guitar um, but obviously put together in very early 65 so quite interesting that a very very rare example um, you won't find many there will be others but you won't find many i have seen a couple um, but yeah there we go led down here we have a vox organ guitar an incredibly rare thing unfortunately it does need electrical work so it does power on we have had it powered on but it's all there it is all original but it does need some tlc some tlc so we need someone who's got a clever electrical mind i think they are quite complicated but i'm not going to say any more than that because i know nothing well, I know nothing about Vox organ guitars in particular. <laughs> I was going to say, man. <laughs> yeah, my, my area of expertise in Vox organ guitars is lacking. So it, it's doable. I'll, I'll put it that I've been told it's doable, but you just need to find the right man. I guess one person I could promote on the Vox side is a gentleman called Martin Kelly, who we know quite well. He knows everything about Vox guitars and he would probably be the man to ask if you want to find someone to fix up a guitar. Martin um, writes some fantastic books as well, many good books out, including one on Vox Guitars and Rickenbacker and various other things. So yeah, Martin Kelly would be a good contact for someone who's interested in his Vox organ guitar to ask opinion on restoration, etc. And then we go over to here, we've got a this is, I think this is where all of our expensive acoustics are um, hanging out and we've got some very good acoustics indeed and I'm just looking here, I was going to say right, I'll pick out my favourite but I love them all for different and similar reasons I guess. <laughs> um, but essentially what we have is we have a modern, when I say modern, it's going to be about 10 years old that's modern in the terms of guitar history martin d45 top of the line dreadnought in fantastic condition i think there is a few very minor dings but otherwise it is in incredible condition we have another martin next to it just in the middle here this is a 1965 we did initially put it down as a 64 it was a cataloging error it is actually a 65 uh, Martin 0021 we got a good demo of that online it is a really nice example and an incredible player then we have a Loudon F50 top of the line these guitars are they around 10,000 new it's something crazy like that isn't it yeah anyway asking price around half that so a Loudon uh, F50 that is with African Blackwood and Sinker Redwood top an incredible guitar again a really big resonant sounding guitar next to that we have a collings uh, d2h so the herringbone so very much uh, the martin martin copy type thing and then just up from that we have the santa cruz again another martin type copy obviously martin were hugely inf influential uh, in the realms of acoustic guitar making so an American made guitar again and that is the OM pre-war model so modeled on an OM pre-war Martin underneath one of the best acoustic makers in my opinion um, there is a Furch Red Deluxe very high-end guitar incredible condition and to be honest with you if I had to pick one I'd probably go for the Furch guitar, um, possibly because it's got the cutaway, 
but I just think it looks really smart. It's got the uh, it's got the contouring here as well, which makes it nice and comfortable to play, which is sort of a a deluxe feature. And then we do sell classical guitars. So at Friday the eighth of March we have antique and classical guitars, and this is a Jesus Belazar Garcia classical guitar concert guitar and these are very very collectible you are looking at values in the region of four to seven thousand for these so that's why we have put it behind the cabinet area we'll show you some other classical guitars later but that is a good classical guitar i'm sure there'll be lots of interest in that one and then just below not acoustic guitars but jazz guitars we have a gibson es175 a 90s es175 this one has had a couple of modifications uh, the extra switch is to control the piezo that has been put in the bridge uh, within the bridge there's a fishman piezo in the bridge which is controlled by that switch so that is in factory black finish as well so some of you will i'm just talking here and i can hear my voice yeah, resonating yeah. in the acoustics <laughs> it's quite off-putting so um that's why i keep breaking up quite a bit uh this is the uh, 1970s gibson es175 this is actually consigned by the same owner of the 59 175 the reason he acquired this one i think is because he was a little bit terrified of playing his 59175 with its value in the condition it's in so um, in used condition that one but a good 175 nonetheless so here we have a tree of ES goodness uh, so we've got four vintage examples here so I mentioned the 67 Fender 12 there is the 67 Gibson 12 that's a 335 12 string don't see many of them around. Good example, some checking on the body, replace control knobs, but it's a nice guitar. Really, really cool demo of that online actually, showing what a 12 string like this can do. Slightly later here into the 70s, 74 ES355 this one. Ebony board, block inlays, walnut finish, gold hardware. Really smart looking guitar though and one of my favorites in the sale. I'm not a huge ES fan, but I do like that guitar. It's very, very playable, even though it has got the skinnier nut, but I'm not too concerned about that. On the top there, we have, at the top of the tree, 1961 Gibson ES345. This guitar is original apart from the neck has been refinished as well as the fretboard so someone I think is uh, a fan of Rickenbacker maybe and wanted the lacquered fretboard which is a bit of a shame having that Brazilian rosewood lacquered over but um, it hasn't been refinished for a neck repair either so apart from that this is an original example lovely sunburst on there nicely faded and that has its original PAF pickups as does the 62 next to it. So this is another ES345 from 62. Original PAFs, original cherry finish. The replacement parts on this are the tuners, the bridge and the tunematic has been swapped out for that big clunky industrial looking thing. Big old bit of brass. Big old bit of brass. So probably although not necessarily cheap, you're talk, probably talking hundreds, but you could still obtain those original parts and get that guitar to its original state. So yeah, that is a nice, a nice thing. Worth mentioning that those two early 60s, 345s do not have their original cases, unfortunately. And then within the rack here, we have a another three, this is a free, free, free 5 55 Gibson Custom, but this is a mono version, so it doesn't have the stereo veritone. Um, so that is a cool thing. We have a ES350T, which we actually have two of. There's one from 57 that's been refinished. There's actually a 59 one there, which is very nice indeed. There we go. 1959 ES350. 
350T with the Bigsby. Um, yeah, that is a nice example. It's got the original case, that one as well. A rare thing. And from that golden year, again, with path pickups, so many path pickups in this sale. Um, and then we've got a, a higher end Les Paul Heritage Series Standard 80 Elite with the quilted finish rather than the, I guess, tiger, ma uh, tiger flamed maple. So some people will have a preference for that in the sort of tobacco type burst. And then behind we have, just for you lefties, a Gibson Custom left-handed Les Paul. Really nice top on that one where you can see sort of the more straight flame maple. And that is an R9, so a 1959 Les Paul reissue for you lefty players. And then just going into the final rack here, ending the run, ES140, three-quarter, nice three-quarter Gibson, really good condition. We have a Stephen Stern master built Fender Custom Shop Stratocaster in the quilted blue finish. We have a 60s Telecaster, another vintage Telecaster, completely original 1968 Fender Telecaster in the blonde finish. Um, it's been played, probably could I refret it myself. There'll be lots of people that can are very good with low frets and will be completely fine with it. I refret it if it was me. So that is a nice thing. And then the condition on this is just off the scale. This is a 1982 JV Japanese vintage. So Fender Squire series, so one of the early ones. And I believe only 12 of each type were imported into the UK when these came out. And this was one of them. So you still even got the made in usa pickup sticker on the guard the single ply guard that is a 50s reissue jv stratocaster and i said it in the last video we featured this in go and find a better one there is literally a i'm not even going to be able to find it now there like one tiny mark that is that is the extent of the wear there's a, there's a tiny bit of fretware actually, but the vendor vendor thinks that most of that was probably occurred in the shop before he got it. He got this guitar a few months after it was shipped into the country from the shop that was selling it. So it was in the shop for a while, but he has not played it much in anger. He bought it when he was 18 years old um, and is now selling it now all those years later, 40 odd years later. Vintage Gretsch, 1956 Duo Jet. That's a cool thing, rare thing. I like how lightweight these are. This is a nice resonant guitar. And then we have a 1973 Fender Stratocaster in natural, again, with my favored headstock. As you can see, again, just a reminder, the big headstock there with the larger logo. 73 in natural finish, original natural finish. And then we have the last, I say last of the vintage strats, the last of the non-artist owned vintage strats. That is a 1962 slab board strat, players grade condition, refinished, other things wrong with it. Again, a brass nut, got the 70s touch, new decal there. But have a look at the catalog description that gives you the lowdown on that guitar. Final Gibson, and this is an L5 Premier. Wouldn't have originally had this pickup, but that was fitted by Gibson in the 50s. We believe that's where all the parts seem to date to that period, and it looks like a Gibson fitted loom. Um, so there we go, an L5 Premier. So a rare guitar indeed, and you won't probably won't find many, if any, with that Charlie Christian pickup. So an electrified 1939 that's from L5 Premier. So now we're behind the secondary cabinet area and this has got our artist associated guitars. So things that are coming up towards the end of the day in sort of the 350 lot range. Uh, so many of you will have seen this on all our social channels. This is the last of the vintage strats I'll be showing today. This is a 1964 Fender Stratocaster. Um, so it's an early 64 Strat, green guard, refinished Olympic white body. 
Um, but this was owned by Deirdre Cartwright, used on BBC Rock School, for those of you who remember, in 1983, the first series, used this guitar on that show. Um, so it's been with Deirdre ever since. Originally purchased from Chandler's in Kew. She had a good relationship with the guys at Chandler's back then. No longer Chandler's are no longer around, but there we go. That is a 64 early 64 Fender Stratocaster of Deirdre Cartwright's. And then next to that is the guitar she used on the second series in 1987. This is a 1986 Paul Reed Smith Custom 24. So a rare guitar, it has the one with the sweet switch. A lot of the PRS lovers have a lot of time for the sweet switch. Again, ordered through Chandler's. She actually originally wanted a blue burst one with the bird inlays, but she had to wait, so had this in the interim, and then when the blue one came in, she decided this played and sounded better, so kept it. But this appears in the second series of BBC Rock School, so again, from Deirdre Cartwright. And then right next to that one, again, with the Chandler's uh, Association, this is a 1984 Schecter Stratocaster made by Chandler's Guitars. Chandler's had a relationship with Schecter, a bit like a franchise, and Schecter would ship over their high quality parts and Chandler would construct them. They were the people in the UK that did this. So this is a very well made guitar indeed. Uh, nicely relicked nitro finish in the Olympic white, a bit like her other strap, but we've got the serial number on the back, CS, that stands for Chandler Schecter. And then on the headstock, Chandler Guitars, Schecter. So all the pieces shipped over from Schecter to make this guitar, Kayla Trem, and in Deirdre's own words, it allowed her to do those Van Halen type licks. Um, Deirdre now, very accomplished jazz guitarist, big big name in the jazz scene, often seen at Ronnie Scott's and other, other venues on the jazz circuit. And she also was responsible for the Rock School examinations. So she wrote most of the pieces for that. I actually did the Rock School exams myself. Uh, I think I got up to about grade six and then stopped having lessons. So because I was too good. Didn't do them anymore. <laughs> Not because I was too good. I think I just I thought I got too old for lessons and self-taught ever since. And it all went downhill from there. Um, rare guitar. Fender Bass 5, we had one of these in, it was a couple of sales ago, wasn't it? A uh, candy apple red with matching headstock. It was September, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So this is um, yeah, mid 60s, 66, 67, Fender Bass 5. This was previously owned by Mark Griffiths, and Mark Griffiths was the bass guitarist for The Shadows, or the latest bass guitarist, so he would have been the man doing all the anniversary tours. Um, and the later tours. So that was owned by him. And the reason we know it was owned by him is because we sold it for him directly many years ago. And it stayed with the, vend uh, the buyer ever since. And that buyer is now the vendor and selling it back through us. So there we go, Mark Griffith's Fender Bass 5. Lovely chap, Mark. It was great selling his things, sold his, uh, his first ever guitar, which was a 63 Fender Stratocaster, which was very nice. Your first, ever guitar. Your first ever guitar, not a bad guitar to have, eh? And just focusing now on a guitar that has, I mean, I'd say it's got a bit of a tenuous artist association. It's a 70s Fender Precision Bass. It was reputedly owned by John Entwistle. The only provenance we have is the vendor found a note in the neck pocket stating that if this guitar is found, please contact John Entwistle of The Who with the office number. But before the now deceased vendor bought the guitar, the store had told him that the guitar previously belonged to John Entwistle, and it was a nice surprise when he found that in the neck pocket. Only provenance we've got, so we're not going heavy on saying it definitely was. So a bit of a tenuous link there but it's still, I think our valuation reflects what the guitar is worth or the bass is worth without the artist's connection. So 
it's a it's a well used Fender Precision Bass. And then we have some guitars here from the collection of Ricky Gardner. Now some of you will know Ricky, some won't, but Ricky Gardner, a uh, prog band called Beggar's Opera, a uh, Scottish prog band from back in the day um, and kept going for quite a while and then also, also solo work. But I guess his biggest claim to fame was his work with David Bowie and Iggy Pop and uh, Tony Visconti did some work for. So he has, um, you know, performed live and written with those artists. But this is a 10 top from 2010. This is a Paul Reed Smith Custom. So this guitar has been used on later recordings of Ricky's. It's in great condition with the 10 top. And then just having a look at some other guitars from his collection of a w walk along here. We've got the Schecter Diamond Series Blackjack with the Sustainiac pickup. This guitar sounds great, actually. I think it looks really cool as well. That yeah, that pickup sounds cool. We've had a lot of fun with that. Uh, comparison Dellinger bass guitar, Japanese made bass of the EMG pickups. So that is a great bass guitar, isn't it? It really it genuinely our, is. Our bassist. <laughs> Our bassist here. I say you're a bassist. Yeah, by yeah, by by default. <laughs> by default yeah. yeah, Chris is actually a guitarist, but um, needs plays must. yeah needs must <laughs> play plays bass for Metallica Reloaded, who are the UK's number one Metallica tribute band. And I'm not just saying that because he stood in front of me. Thanks. But they are incredible. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, they are very, very, very good. So if you're into Metallica, go and check out Metallica Reloaded. They are very, very good. Um, they play all around the country. The next time I'll be going to see them is at the Fleece in Bristol because it's the closest venue. <laughs> and however much I love this guy behind the camera, I ain't traveling to go see him. So, um, so you fancy coming to Cyprus with me then? No, <laughs> well, not, not, I'm not doing international, no. <laughs> Sounds arduous. Um, Ibanez RG series, there we go. Japanese made, good thing. It's Japanese made, thank God for that. I'm not going mad. Just thought, <laughs> no, it might be Korean. I'm going to have to edit. <laughs> no, that is the Japanese RG series Ibanez. And next to that, a Music Man Stingray 5 in lovely condition, again used in recordings. I've got some other Ricky Gardner guitars that are in a slightly different area, so we're not going to see them just now. Um, but have a look on the catalogue and see the other guitars from him. On the left hand side is the James Trussart steel top. So this is the African design steel top. This guitar was consigned by a chap called Michael Giles, who has fame for being the drummer, original drummer of King Crimson. Uh, but he, this guitar was purchased for more recent work, he actually bought it from us years and years ago, and he's used it on his recent studio work. Um, so this guitar did originally come through us. It's had its pots changed, but the original pots are in the case. The original pots were push pulls. The pots were changed just for just the standard thing, I guess for more ease of use, I don't know. But um, that comes with its original case and papers. So that's from 2007, a James Trussart. So now we run on to any other business, anything that's not Gibson Fender or artist owned guitars, and there are a lot of them. I believe we're, where do we start? We start at around the one, 140s. 152, yeah, 142. so we're around that lot number, so you can see, and there's about another 200 guitars down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly whip around. I'm gonna um, shout a few names and brands of things that we can see and are good and look cool. So if you want a decent six string bass, there's a Warwick Corvette in very good condition indeed of the Seymour Duncan bass lines pickups. Good guitar, but lots of different brands. We got a modern Yamaha SG500B. We've got a Super Flighter. SF500, Japanese made Yamaha, and then next to that we have an older Ibanez artist, which is going to be the AS100 I'm sure, 
It's not, it's the AS50. There we go. The AS50 model, semi hollow body art, Ibanez, I know. How could you not retain could... every single guitar in this room? <laughs> I'm trying my best. Um, so, all, all sorts of things here. We've got a, a sort of modern Gretsch, uh, K. John, uh, English maker, English luthier. This is his first ever prototype guitar. His, I guess, showcase guitar we actually sold previously to this one. It's an incredible guitar, incredible workmanship. We've got old nostalgic pieces like the Watkins Rapiers. There's a 22 from ni around 1962. And then we've got things like very, very incredibly rare basses. So there we go, there is one of them. So this is an overwater bass, fretless bass, and you don't see many of these. English made, good thing, wacky design. It's almost got the buzzard type headstock there. I guess that uh, that is going on this sort of uh, John Entwistle buzzard very idea, John isn't it? Very John Entwistle. Very John Entwistle indeed. Maybe that was the influence. Uh, vintage Guild acoustic. This is a 12 string from 1964. In reasonable condition, considering the age and the pull that 12 strings can present on the tables of the guitars. But we have all sorts. Let's just quickly whip around. What can we see? Hofners, some PV, old PV guitars. We've got the Nitro there, very uh, very 80s. This one's actually needs a bit of a repair here, but it's, it is a rare guitar. Um, PV T15, I think these guitars are incredible and this one does not weigh a ton. So if you want one that doesn't require a back brace to play. Or crane. Yeah, or a crane. <laughs> there we go, that is a good example. Nice original example. A couple of Hagstroms, we've got an older one, a 60s Hagstrom Viking, and then we've got a more modern, uh, I guess uh, that'll be a Asian factory made, Korean factory, probably HL500, whereas the vintage Hagstrom was made in Sweden, where they originate from. A few more 60s oddities, we have a Futurama 2, made in the Czech Republic. There we go, and then we have a Wurlitzer, American-made Wurlitzer. I think this is the Wildcat, isn't it? Now this guitar, the vendor was told when he bought it from Chandler's in Kew that it was previously owned by Kelly Jones from the Stereophonics. We don't have any other proof or provenance, but apparently it was. So if you're sat there and you happen to know Kelly Jones, why don't you ask him, and then you've got insider information. Yeah. Um, Just give him a nudge. Yeah, but apparently, no extra provenance, but apparently owned by Kelly Jones of Stereophonics. What he might have used it for, we don't know. Uh, PRS SE Hollow Body Piezo. They are very good guitars, made in the Chinese factory, um, but make very good guitars indeed. Some David Ollie Acoustics. A Rory Dowling made Taran tenor guitar which is an incredible guitar. And apparently, this is the only tenor guitar ever made by Taron. So we have been told, we're led to believe. So that is a rare thing, possibly unique. Uh, Taylor Acoustic, Martin Acoustic, another Taylor Acoustic. We got three Mahogany Larave guitars, all slightly different models, but all from the Mahogany series, all from the same year. These are all, they're very, very modern guitars, so made in the last four or five years, but they're all in as new condition from that Mahogany series. I love this little set, this little Rickenbacker lap guitar set. It's the original Silver Burst. Yeah, <laughs> we said this before. Yeah, the original silver burst. There we go. Just think of the tone. Yeah, before before <laughs> Tool um, were were the silver burst masters. There we go. Um, and there's the matching amps. So the silver burst Rickenbacker with the same matching logo. So the amp and guitar set. I think that's a really cool set. And then moving on down here. John Petrucci Sterling. We've got an Ibanez Joe Satriani Premium just led down there. And what can we find around the corner? We have some PRS guitars. Paul Reed Smith Mira, Myra, 
how's it pronounced? I don't know. Epiphone <laughs> Joe Pass, a Paul Reed Smith EG3, which has had its pickups changed. And just before we go on to the next PRS, tallest guitar in the cell room? Probably. That wasn't intentional either. Yeah, so that is a <laughs> Korean made dime washburn. These have come quite collectible now. This has had a neck repair around the heel, but it's in the green slime finish. So the most sought after finish, not the rarest finish, but the most sought after finish. And yeah, they are collectible guitars now. And because of artist association, not that it's everyone's cup of tea, the big pointy guitars, mm. the, I can see that increasing in value because of the Arts Association, and especially when the masses finally accept that Pantera are one of the greatest <laughs> bands ever. I'm not gonna disagree. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna sell that on many, but um, yeah, big Pantera fan. Um, I'm not a huge pointy guitar fan, but I'm a huge Pantera fan. Uh, Paul Reed Smith, John Mayer signature, another artist, guitar, not owned by him, but his signature model, the Silver Sky. There we go, the uh, PRS Stratocaster. Um, and another artist model guitar, the Albert Lee Music Man. There we go, iconic look. And really nice guild acoustic next to that. That is the, uh, I'm gonna have to, the DV72 model. There we go, had to remind myself with the nice blue inlays on that one again i can't believe you can't remember the information of all 300 and i know plus I'm, guitars. I'm i'm going to be kicking myself after we've done this video <laughs> uh brian moore mc1 now this is not one of the asian factory copies this is the real deal this is an american made brian moore mc1 and it's in pretty good condition so the look at the curve on that there we go, it's wild this thing, but they are rare guitars. Uh, you see more of the, A or the I think Korean made ones than you do American ones, but that is a nice guitar indeed. More things, Leverson Blade, high quality, very high quality Japanese made Leverson Blade. This is an early serial number as well. That is the Texas standard. Uh, Reverend guitars, I love Reverend guitars, Korean made guitars, but lots of artists are endorsed by, have endorsements with these, especially within the genre of music that I follow mostly. A lot of punk bands um, use them, um, but Billy Corgan is one of the latest um, in endorse, endorsees? Yes. Endorsees, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, which happens to be another one of my favorite bands. I don't own a Reverend guitar though, so their marketing, endorsey marketing, hasn't worked on me just yet. Now's your chance. Now's your chance. Um, Eastman, very good guitars. Godin Montreal, I think this deserves a special mention because Godin make very, very good guitars. Canadian firm, I think um, Canadian parts constructed in America or the other way around. Can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Usually it says on the headstock as a sales sales pitch, but anyway, the Montreal Modi Mod Modi model, Premier Montreal, very very good guitar, very high quality, semi hollow body guitar, nice thing. Couple of high end modern Burns guitars. These are both limited edition. This is the 2004 Marvin anniversary model and this is the very rare indeed shadows custom model that were made in small numbers hundreds of them possibly 500 tops but maybe not even as many as that more good acoustics taylor two taylors there gs mini slightly on the cheaper end and the taylor in front but then just by that not a taylor a blue ridge br183 these are incredible guitars for the money. Really, really good guitars for the money. Made in China, ignore that, because Chinese guitars are good now. Um, and I would actually say this is one of the most inquired about guitars in the sale, which kind of, I think, backs, 
Well, it's not a surprise because they've always been popular, but it just backs up, I think, my... Um, bold statement. Yeah, my bold statement of it being an incredible acoustic guitar for the money. You won't be disappointed. High-end appointments as well. Uh, nice Takamine at the back there. We've got a James Tyler Variax. So James Tyler's co collaboration with Line 6. So we have two of those in the sale. Um, those of you who are into your hair metal, speed metal, there's a Jackson Professional. We have an Epiphone Casino. Very popular these days, these modern Epiphone Casinos. We have a Heritage H150. We have a Harmony, Vintage Harmony from 63. Pretty sure it's from 63, just the depths of my memory bank, pulling that out there. Um, the H77 model, uh, it's had some modifications, but they tend to be popular. I think they're cool looking guitars. One of my favorite guitars and in outstanding condition, Ibanez Artist, I think this is a 2618 model from 1977, made in Japan, has the original case and the condition is just unreal for its age. How old is it? 50 years-ish. Correct? When did you say it was from? 77. That'll do. 50 odd years. <laughs> um, more PRS guitars. The majority of these here are SE models. We've got a couple of artist associated ones. The Santana model, the Tremonte model. Uh, we got the PRS Custom in the front there. Um, is that a 10 top? No, it's not, but that's from 2002. So Paul Reed Smith Custom 22 there. And we're going to spin around the front here and see what we've got. We've got quite a few lap guitars in this sale, actually. There's a Selma lap guitar in the gold finish. Nice thing. Brian May Red Special, My Guitar Hero, Steve Lukather, Sterling Music Man Signature, and then we have a Joe Satriani, one of two Joe Satrianis. This is the, uh, we saw the premium earlier, this is the lesser of the models. And then we have the Rob Chapman or Chapman Guitars M3, I believe, ML3 modern model. Very good guitars, and that looks, that's a cool looking guitar. Yeah, I like the whole telly thing with you got the little carved cutaway there for the reach up the top. Infinity inlay there in the middle. Hard tail, reverse headstock. That's a cool thing. Anyway, moving on. More Gretsch guitars. Early 90s White Falcon. No sale will be complete without one. And then we have a late, late 60s or early 70s. Oh, late Lot 231, look it up in the catalogue. Yeah, Gretsch Streamliner, the date is in the catalogue, I can't remember. The reason I can't remember is because we have another one in stock that's going in a future sale, and one's late 60s, one's early 70s. Can't remember off the top of my head which one's which. And uh, more things here, Lag High Vibe, that's quite interesting. It's kind of like a, how do I explain it? You play it, and then it makes the effect out of the guitar. It's oh. really interesting, and it su works surprisingly well. Um, Taylor 12 string over here. Nice guitar. And then look at this, a John Birch fretless Thunderbird type bass guitar. Now, if that wasn't fretless, I'd probably even buy it myself because it is really, really cool. I love Thunderbird guitars. John Birch pickups are great. Um, it's an interesting thing. So if you're into the whole John Birch thing, especially the pickups, and you're into custom-made Luthier-built guitars, there we go. Also in the running for tallest guitar in the sale. Also in the running of the tallest <laughs> guitar. You just want that Washburn Dime mention again, <laughs> don't you? No, there's another tall guitar over there as well. <laughs> Limited edition purple sparkle Les Paul Epiphone. So there you go. You can complete the set. Les Paul Strat Purple Sparkle. It's actually a pretty good colour match, isn't it? It is a good colour match, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't think it's good. I'm 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 pleasantly pleased with that little uh little happy accident there. Um Ovation 
breadwinner, another Epiphone Casino. I think we have four Epiphone Casinos in the cell. Two in Natural, two in Sunburst. Is uh, that right? I know we've definitely got three. The four we've got one. three, maybe four. Um, but that one, I think, is the nicest one. It's a 90s Korean one. Yes. So it's got like a skinnier nut compared to the others. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, nice thing. It's nice. This is rare, a Vox Winchester bass guitar. Now these were actually made out of old factory parts. So they use the old um, pedal chassis, although I believe the the bass guitar ones might be slightly bigger. Mm. So they might have um, they might have made those specially. But anyway, um, all old parts to make these Winchester basses. But it's a, it's a cool thing. Bit of a uh, Vox vintage history, showing my shoddy bass lines there. Sorry, it's only out of tune. Anyway. <laughs> Blame me for that, it's fine. Uh, Daryl Hyam, uh, rockabilly type guitarist. That is the PV Rockingham that Daryl Hyam had uh, association or collaboration with. Uh, 90s Gordon Smith, a Japanese Aria Pro 2 Thor sound, a Epiphone Nighthawk, so Epiphone's equivalent. Uh, Dan Electro Longhorn. This is a more modern Longhorn, but you don't see many of the Longhorn reissues around on the marketplace. And then these are great guitars. These Hona Professional, the Jack in the Steinberger style, licensed Steinberger guitars. But these are these are great. Active circuitry. Very 80s. So another very high-end Warwick bass. This is a Corva NT. Uh, Koa top, maple board. This guitar actually needed to be rebuilt because um, it, all the pickups and the hardware got tarnished in storage. And yeah, it was built with all the correct parts, now put back to its former glory. So a high-end Warwick rare base. And to get the equivalent these days is 4,000 pounds at least, something like that. Have a look at the catalog, you'll see we're not asking anywhere near that. Uh, Eastman John Pisano model. There's a Hofner uh, solid bass guitar, a rare thing, single pickup in great condition, that one. D'Angelico, it's not an original D'Angelico. If it was, it would be behind the cabinets. Um, guarded by high security, being how valuable they are now. But that is one of the, um, the XL, one of the Korean made ones. This is actually a limited edition run, that one. Um, and then we've got the Villette here. These are rare things, American made. This is the Moon series. And yeah, Joe Villette. Cool guitar, acoustic guitar. That's the 12, so yeah, 12 string baritone, that one. Um, we've got a Dobro Resonator, US made one there. Very good indeed, signature model. Uh, we got the Rickenbacker there, very good condition. Rickenbacker 360 in maple glow finish. And that is from year 2009. There we go, just quickly reading the serial number there. Uh, 1964 Rickenbacker 100 model lap guitar, again, um, really nice example with the original case. Some nice high-end Taylor acoustics here and the Taylor electric. Gretsch Brian sets a hot rod model in the glowing green. Radioactive green. Radioactive green finish. You can hear the Geiger counter going already. <laughs> Couple of US PRS guitars. We have the McCarty hollow body and then we have the 12 string electric, which you really don't see many of. So I'm, um, I'm sure that will do well. 12 string acoustic, another UK Luthier. This is Nigel Thornbury. Now Nigel, as I said, UK Luthier, this is being sold on behalf of the family, some of the remaining stock of his. His claim to fame is if you know of the Ash Borey basses, mm. he was the man that invented and created the Ash Borey bass um, in collaboration with, uh, it was Guild and Fender. Did um, we have one recently that belonged to him? Or something? A couple of, uh, maybe a couple of years ago. We have one in the sale that belonged to him. Oh. Another Lefty Delight, Furch guitars, left-handed. Very good guitars, Furch make, but that's a left-handed acoustic by the maker. Uh, national guitar, Stylo, Hawaiian scene. This was actually a square neck that's been converted to a round neck. But there we go. 
so I guess players grade in some ways because of the conversion. And another Watkins Rapier, the third one we've seen in this sale, just led down on the table there. There's an Electra MPC, that's the rare model with the peace sign on the top there. If you look at the catalogue for the guitar spares, we have some lots of modules that will fit that guitar. So if you buy that guitar, this one is actually sold without modules, but we do have some modules in the sale. So you can get a very cool sounding experimental guitar, rare thing as well. And talking of cool sounding guitars. Favorite guitar in the auction. This is really cool, isn't it? Every time, every time you pick it, you can't not play it. I know, every time I walk past it, I'm just trying to, what can we, what can we get? Um, where's the organ? Jazz organ, there we go. Enough. Enough. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'm looking forward to viewing or not, but um, yeah, it, we could get some interesting noises from, from that. It's really cool though. It's got the original box as well. PJD guitars, never ever handled one before these two came in. Um, UK Luthier or makers of guitars, and these guitars are incredible, especially this one. They're both incredible, but I just like single pickup guitars, and that's a really nice weight jazz master style, nitro finish, sounds good. We actually did a demo of that one on our channel, so have a look at that. Alden, another good UK maker, acoustic guitar there. Uh, Roy Orbison, Epiphone 12 string Bard, this is a wacky thing as well. Skeleton guitar. Swiss cheese. I don't know. Derek Misselbrook or Miss Misselbrook. It was made by. I'm not going to say anymore because I know nothing about it really. Um, although I know it's rare and was made by that man using parts. Parts I do not know. Swiftly moving down here, there's another Ibanez artist double cut, not as quite good condition as the last one we saw, uh, but from the same period. Another Epiphone Casino, nice guitar. A Morris 12 string, they're very, very good guitars indeed. Um, the sort of a Mar very much Martin copies, but have a look at that one. They come in at uh, sort of a mid, mid hundreds, I guess, low to mid hundreds, so very good 12 string acoustic guitar couple of old Hofners, there's a carve in there with one of the nicest necks I think in the sale. You took the words, I was, was like, trying to get in to be like, that neck is amazing. That neck. It's really nice. Really is nice. Um, Yamaha Studio Lord SL500 next to another one for the lefties, the Corvette standard left-handed bass guitar. Sigma J200 copy, again, they'll come in at decent money to acquire one of those. We've got a Microfets Wanderer, that's a that's a rare piece. Um, uh, we have featured that quite a lot because we've we've tried it a couple of times in the auction um, and it's a pretty niche thing. I don't think people have re really cottoned onto it. In America that would fly out because the Americans know more about them than we do, but um, there it is. Uh, we've got a Gallagher Guitars Doc Watson, We've got an Epiphone arch top here. And just on the rack here, we've got, apart from the things in front, we've got a Swedish made uh, Hagstrom Scandi. We have a Burn Scorpion bass. We have a Cussis, the world's heaviest bass. We showed that in a consignment update video and it took ages for the cameraman to film it and my arm was trembling. because uh, Burns made a more metal bass than BC Rich. Yeah, meh, mad. <laughs> They, maybe that was BC Rich's inspiration, was actually English made Burns guitars. Custom made, that's possibly unique that guitar, made by Jim Burns himself to actually pay off a debt that guitar. Quite an interesting history with that one, uh, but a wacky looking guitar. 
and then we have a Baldwin, Burns Baldwin Virginian there from the mid 60s. Again, another wacky British guitar. And then we have some, uh, many others at the back there. We've got a Baby Bison. This one was actually used by Joe Bonamassa. Um, read the description there. Lot, uh, lot 315, you'll see what the circumstance in which Bonamassa played that guitar. And there we have a Burns or Baldwin Bison. Um, so again, a rare thing, but a nice original thing nonetheless. And we're on our final run. So we have a Taylor acoustic. We have a Hofner, 70s Hofner violin bass. We had the fantastic news recently that Paul McCartney was reunited with his original. That was quite amazing how quickly that happened. I thought it would never happen. Um, but it did, they found his original violin bass. Um, so if you've been hiding under a rock and know nothing about that, because it did make main news, go and have a read, read of that story. Um, we have a Gretsch Country Gentleman bass guitar. Um, that's, a, that's a big old bass. Again, contender for the tallest guitar, the skyscraper of the, uh, of the sale. <laughs> the neck is massive, it's really, really white. <laughs> it really is. And this just screams uh, vintage Americana, doesn't it? This is the K Kelvinator, of the Jazz 2 model. Really cool looking guitar. And then we have a Hofner Very Thin here from the 60s. We have a Faith Eclipse and then a Vox Custom 25. Uh, what Probably one of the best guitars of the sale from 1981. And when I say best guitars, just within the budget because a couple of hundred pounds for this nice and heavy um, so lots of sustained neck through um, but that is a really really good guitar it's a pretty rare thing as well um, and they do not break the bank and then we have an LTD TE1000 you're a big fan of this aren't you yeah this is like one of my favorite guitars in the auction matte black blast uh, something yeah, like black that blast, yeah. black blast finish textured finish hard tail and lots of sustain again I'm High output on the scallop frets at the bottom, but no, they're not needed really, are they? The, the, just the whole thing just feels really good. It's Roasted good. maple neck, Korean made, 2021, but that is, I think, that's basically in brand new condition. The guy who bought it never really used it, but um, if I was going to buy a telly guitar myself, probably buy one of those. But that's for musical tastes more than more than anything else. And then just on the end here, we have a Takamine EN60C nylon string electroacoustic. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was the sale room tour for our auction on the 58th of March 2024. We are on public view on the Monday, the 4th of March, 9 till 5 p.m. So if you are watching this slightly later, I'm sorry you've missed us. But if you are watching this as soon as the video comes out, we are on public view on the Monday, the 4th of March. Then the sale is on the 5th for guitars and artist associated guitars and equipment, the 6th for part two guitars and amplification, the 7th for pedals, spares and audio equipment and antique and classical guitars on the 8th. We also have a sale of musical instruments on Friday the 8th as well. So have a look at the catalog for that. And it's all online at auctions.gardnerholgate.co.uk for guitars, guitarauctions.com. So have a look there and do please remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video and hit the bell icon for future content. And of course, look at those video demos to see lots of the guitars that feature in this auction and look out for future consignment updates with the following auction that will be at the start of June. So for now, that is it, and we'll see you next time.